Hi everyone, today I will give a brief introduction of the use of linear algebra in cryptography, or more specifically, the Hue cipher. The word cryptography or cryptology comes from Greek, which means hidden or secret writing. It is a science about transforming information. Its aim is to make information obscure and only readable to those who the message is designed for. Cryptography has a long history from texts in the Holy Bible to the universal spread of smart cards and online payment methods such as PayPal. There is even a specific field called financial cryptography. One cryptology technique is the Hue cipher, which was first invented by Lester S. Hue in 1929. It relates linear algebra and matrix theory to cryptography. The basic process model of cryptography can be divided into five steps. First, we have our plain text, which is the original message. Then, we use techniques to encrypt information and turn it into the ciphertext, which is basically something unreadable. After we deliver the cipher to aimed targets, they can then decrypt using the corresponding methods and get the original plain text back. The most important part in this process is the technique used to convert information, in other words, the key. Now, let's look at an example about how Hue Cipher actually works. Suppose I have a secret to tell you, which is linear algebra is fun. The first thing to do is to generate the plain text. And Hue Cipher assigns each letter a number from 0 to 25, and 26 for the blank. Through this process, we create a n by n matrix A. If there is unfilled spot after converting, simply fill them with 26, which stands for the space. Second, form an encryption key, which should be an n by n invertible matrix B. Let's use this particular encryption key for our example. Then, multiply A by B and get the transformed matrix C. However, since we need to transform the matrix back into letters again, we need to change all numbers in this matrix that is greater than 26 into ones smaller or equal to 26. The way we do it is to divide each number by 26 and write down the remainder to form our matrix C. After we've done that, this is the C matrix we end up. And then we just need to convert the numbers into letters again. And this series of letters is our cipher text, which is really unreadable and misleading. Suppose now we have already delivered both matrices B and C to the receiver. How can the receivers decrypt the code then? The basic process is first to find the inverse of key matrix B, then multiply C by B inverse to get A, as it is shown here. However, since the last step of encryption involves calculation of mod 26. The decryption process is actually a little trickier than it sounds like. Let's look at the example. First, convert letters into numbers. Then, we find B inverse and convert it into mod 26 as well. As we can see here, we are dividing each number by 3 mod 26, which is the same thing actually as multiplying each number by 
the multiplicative inverse of 3 mod 26. The specific method to calculate modular multiplicative inverse involves Euclidean algorithm, which we will not discuss here. However, there is a chart listing all multiplicative inverse of invertible elements in mod 26, and as we can see, the multiplicative inverse of 3 mod 26 is 9. And thus, we can write our matrix B inverse in this new form. Now, we just need to convert B inverse into mod 26 as well. And now, we can multiply C by B inverse and change it back into mod 26. As we can see now, the matrix we've got here is the same matrix as A. After we have our matrix A, the last thing to do is to transform from numbers into letters and read the original message, which is linear algebra is fun and it is very true. After introducing the basic encryption and decryption of the Hue cipher, I now want to spend a few minutes talking about cipher attacks. Here, I will introduce a very simple attack, which is called known plain text attack. A known plain text attack happens when we know something about the plain text, a creep. This happens when the message starts or ends with some stereotype information. The example I will use here is from the teaching note of Professor Christensen in Northern Kentucky University. Suppose we have the cipher text, which is something right here, and we have no idea what it means. But we also know that the plain text starts with words a creep. We also assume that the key is a 2x2 two two matrix. Then we can get a relationship between the ciphertext and the plaintext. Notice here that Professor Christensen uses 1 for A, 2 for B, and so on, instead of 0 for A, 1 for B, which is okay because the calculation is basically still the same. And here, we're going to stick with Professor Christensen's notation. And this relationship can be converted into the following equations. Now, we can solve for A and B first using these two equations. Since in modular 26, negative 15 is the same thing as 11 mod 26, we get this equation right here, and after we solve it, we get a equals 1. Substitute a equals 1 back into the first equation, we get 3b equals 5. To get b, we divide both sides by 3 mod 26, which is the same thing as multiplying the multiplicative inverse of it, which is 9 mod 26, according to the previous chart. Thus, we get that b is 19. Now, we have the values for a and b. Then, we need to solve for c and d using the same method. To get c, we first multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of 15 mod 26, which is 7 mod 26. And the result we get is that c equals 20. Substitute the result back into the original equation, 
we get 3D equals negative 15, which is the same thing as 7 mod 26. After using the same method, we get D equals 11. And now we also have the values of C and D. Finally, we get our key matrix. Notice here that this is an extremely simplified example. Usually the process is far more complicated, which involves guessing and using computer programs to test different possibilities and find out the real key matrix. And actually, the known plain text attack is one of the simplest kind of attacks that we can perform. Hue cipher is the first polygraphic cipher in which it was practical to operate on more than three symbols at once. After its invention in 1929, ciphers were more difficult to break if others didn't know the cipher key. However, it also has certain limitation. For example, the calculation is a little bit tedious and it is hard to convert long information. Also, under context of high technologies nowadays, Hue cipher is not really safe. However, matrix theories are still used in modern cryptography. It's just combined with nonlinear tools to make it much safer. Hue actually included some nonlinear ciphers in his paper as well. Some method used by him, including whether composing a substitution cipher before calculation or adding a shift and so on. And that's all my introduction of the Hue cipher. And if you are interested in cryptography, there are more resources you can find on the internet. This is the end. Thanks everyone.